So now here I have two examples. And both of those examples are asking me to prove those arguments or uh, show that these arguments are valid. So the first argument is I have uh, three premises, P or Q, and then Q implies S, and then not S and T. Therefore, the conclusion is T and P. So I need to prove this. So once again, I'm going to write my conclusion here, T and P. And then I'm going to erase this because I would like to reach to this conclusion. And let's number those premises. So these are the premises. I'm not going to write them uh, th that they are premises. So, but let's before we move on, let's look at the uh, conclusion. Uh, it's and, all right? So it's a conjunction. I need to prove both T and P, okay? So what do I have here? Well, first off, um, I mean, if you look separately, because this is one of the challenges, right? I mean, where should I start? Um, so if you have uh, experience, if you do these type of proofs over and over again, well, when you look at it, you basically see the starting point, all right? Um, but at first, it may be very difficult and challenging. So therefore, you may want to look at every single premise first and see what you can deduct from those uh, individual statements by using our rules. And by the way, I added these two rules, modus tollendo opponents and addition here. So when I look at the first premise, P or Q, I cannot deduct anything uh, by simply using this statement. All right. Um, however, I can deduct uh, something from not S and T, because this is conjunction, so that means if this is true, not S must be true, T must also be true, all right? And similarly, from Q implies S, I cannot deduct anything from itself. So let's start with using the statement in three. So because this is true, not S must be true, okay? Um, so this is basically simplification a rule of line three. And similarly, T is also true. Again, this is simplification of the statement in line three. So by the way, I got T already. So all I have to do is to prove that P is true. Well, what else can I learn? Well, now let's look at the second uh, uh, statement. Q implies S and then the fourth not S. So this is a standard modus ponens, uh, modus uh, tollens. So therefore, I must have not Q true. So this is modus uh, tollens. Let me denote it MT uh, between the arguments two and four. Okay, so I got not Q very well. Um, what else? All right, so now I can use uh, this disjunction P or Q is true, not Q is true, meaning Q is false. So therefore, P must be true. So this is uh, MTP, all right, between the arguments 1 and 7. Very well, I got T as well. I already had T, uh, P, I'm sorry. I already had T, I now have P. So therefore, eight, T and P must be correct. And this is uh, simply the conjunction rule between the arguments five and seven. And that is the conclusion of our uh, proof. Now let's look at the next example, all right? So in this example, I have two premises, P implies not Q and R implies S. The second uh, premise is Q or R. And then therefore the conclusion is P implies S. So this is a conditional derivation. Remember in the conditional derivation, we start with making the assumption that P is true. All right, uh, if P is false, who cares? This statement P implies S is true anyway. So let's look at the case where P is true. If I can show that S is true, 
well, then that means P implies S is true. So let's note my uh, conclusion. P implies S here. Okay. And let's try to uh, prove the uh, argument. Okay. So what do I know? Well, let's number those premises so that I can easily refer. Well, thanks to one, I now actually know that P implies not Q must be true, right? This is simplification. Simplification of the argument in line one. And similarly, uh, because this is and, R implies S must be true. So this is also simplification of the argument in line one. All right, what else do I know? Well, I can't really move uh, any further with those four premises now. So now I'm going to start proving this P implies S, the conditional sentence. How do I do that? If you remember, I open a box. So this is the sub proof where I make the assumption P. So let's call this five, line five. So let's suppose P is true. Well, this is assumption for conditional derivation. Okay, so when P is true, what do I know? I can use my previous four now premises. Well, look at line three, P implies not Q and P. Therefore, uh, not Q must be true. And this is modus ponens of line three and five. Very good. Not Q is true. What else? Hmm. Well, use line two, right? Q or R not Q, so this is exactly MTP, modus tollendo, uh, 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 MTP, so I have R, right? So between the arguments two and six. So R is true very well, but you know, I am trying to reach P implies S, so I need to get S. Okay, very well, I can use Line four, R implies S is true, R is true. By modus ponens, S must be true as well. So this is modus ponens between line four and seven. So that's it, I proved if P is true, S must be true. So therefore, line nine, uh, P, must, uh, P implies S is true. And that was the conclusion, oh, well, okay. So what is this? This is conditional derivation thanks to the arguments between five to eight. So these were the premises. This is the conclusion. So I proved that this, uh, the, the, uh, the argument, the initial argument that I have is actually a valid argument.